what's going on guys hope you're doing awesome and welcome back for another tensorflow tutorial so i feel a little bit bad because so far we've been using both the sequential and the functional api but really for the examples that i've given there really wouldn't be a point uh, to use the functional api so i want to give you a more real example uh, where you can't actually use just the sequential api and uh so we're taking another look at mnist but with a little twist we now have two uh, MNIST digits per example. So uh, for example, here we have the digit uh, zero and one, and I'm gonna have a link in the description for you to download this so that you can also uh, follow along with the video. Uh, but anyways, we're not gonna actually focus on the, on the custom data, so loading the actual data. That's gonna be for a future uh, separate video. Uh, for now, I just wanna give you a little bit more, an actual example for when the functional API becomes useful. So uh, let's get to the code. And uh, what we have right here is just the basics imports that we've been using. Uh, so uh, we also have one more, which is pandas, and this is gonna be used to load the data set. So you can just do a conda install pandas, I believe, and then you'll have this. And uh, so, as I said, we're not gonna focus on the actual data loading part, meaning I'm gonna copy paste some stuff here and uh, I don't like copy pasting stuff, but we're not gonna focus on the on, on that part in this video. So uh, you, you can also, there's gonna be a link in the description where you can uh, copy paste this code as well. I'm just gonna paste that. And uh, basically right here, this is for loading the actual data. All right, so we're using pandas to read from a CSV file, uh, and then we're uh, using uh, tf.data. And again, I'm gonna cover this in a separate video to actually load the data. So what I do want to focus on is that now we have two target values for each example, meaning we can't use the sequential because remember sequential can only map one input to one output, but now we actually have two outputs. So uh, we're gonna build a model and remember we have to use the functional now. So we're gonna do start with keras.input, we're gonna specify the input shape. And uh, in this case, they are uh, 64 by 64 pixels and then they are one channel just because they are grayscale. And then we're gonna do uh, a com layer, com2d, and we're gonna specify uh, filters, uh, let's say 32. We're gonna specify the kernel size, let's say uh, three, just for keeping it simple. And then, yeah, I guess we can do padding equals same. And then we're gonna also do regularization. So let's actually go to the top here and I also want to specify just some hyperparameters. So let's do hyperparameters and uh, let's specify the batch size. Let's do 64 and let's specify weight decay to be 0 0.001. So for L2 normalization that we did um, two videos ago, I believe. And then let's specify the learning rate 0 0.001. All right, so let's go back now to our model. So we're gonna do kernel regularizer we can do T, uh, Kara. Actually, we can we can also import that. So let's do layers. Let's import regularizers, and then go back, and then uh, regularizers dot L two, uh, and then of weight decay. All right, and then we gotta do uh, of inputs right there. Now let's do a batch norm layer. So la layers uh, batch normalization. Of X so so far nothing is new right we've done all of this before and uh, there's not that much different but I just want to give you sort of a more in-depth example where you would actually use this so th the difference is going to be when uh, when we get to the output uh, but anyways then let's do uh, keras dot activation dot relu of X and then let's do another com 2d com 2d of I don't know, let's say sixty-four three, and then kernel regularizer equal regularizers dot l two of weight decay, and then let's also send in the input x on that, and again uh, we're gonna do just a batch normalization, send in x, and then keras activations dot relu of x, and let's do a max pooling right here. Uh, so, I don't know, let's do another comp layer, comp 2D, let's just specify 64, 3, then let's just do relu, so no batch norm here, 
and then kernel regularizer keras reg um, just regularizers dot l2 of weight decay and then yeah we can do one more so com to d 128 filters now so let's double it uh three activation equals relu and then just send in the x and then we can do one max pool max pooling uh and then uh, let's flatten it and then let's now get to the output so uh what we're going to do is we're going to do one dense layer so layers dense let's do 128 nodes and let's set it activation equals relu on that and send in next and uh let's also add some regularization so let's do layers uh drop out 0 0.5 and then send in x and then um, yeah, we can actually do one more layer down. So let's do layer down 64 activation equals relu of X. And now we get to the actual. So now we get to the actual output. So what we want to do now, let's do output one and what, let's do a dense layer. We're going to do 10 nodes and then let's call it. Let's give it a name. So it's our first number and then we're going to send in X and then output two. We're going to do layer dense of 10 name uh second number and then we're going to send in x so as you can see here we're, not, we're using the input x to map to two different outputs right so this would essentially give two different branches of this thing right here and this is when things like the functional api becomes useful right just these two lines right here uh, because we so the sequential is nice it's very simple it's very compact but it can't do things like this. Uh, and that's, that's the scenario when we actually have to use the functional. And you could also combine them. So for example, you could, you could do this uh, right here in, an, uh, in a sequential, and then you could just do uh, these two on a functional. So you, could, you can also combine the two. Uh, but anyways, I'm just gonna, so this is just for two outputs. And then uh, I'm gonna do model, mo let's see, model, equals keras dot model inputs equals inputs outputs is now a list and we're gonna do outputs one outputs two and then when we do model dot compile we're gonna set the optimizer let's do optimizers dot atom and let's set learning rate here and then we're gonna specify the loss and then the loss is actually gonna be two losses so we're going to do losses, sparse. We're going to use sparse categorical cross entropy and then from logic equals true. Um, we're actually, let's remove that this time. So let's do, we can specify here activation equals softmax like that. So that, and then we don't need to do from logit. So activation softmax. And then we're going to do one more loss function. And I think there's a way to make this com more compact. Uh, I haven't actually tried it, but I think that if you would just uh, specify this, uh, that would uh, be for both. But you could try that out. Um, so the safe way is just to write them all up. So we're going to use sparse categorical cross entropy for both. And then we want to keep track of metrics equals uh, accuracy. And now, as usual, uh, we're going to do model.fit. In this case, we're just going to send in train data set. And uh, batch size and everything is taken care inside this uh, data loading part, which I haven't covered again, but uh, we don't care too much about that. Then let's do epoch 5, verbose equals 2. And then model.evaluate evaluate on, the, on the test data set. And then verbose equals 2. And uh, yeah, so let's run this and let's see what kind of accuracy we get when we're training on this multi-digit MNIST uh, if we do not get any errors. So we, Keras has no attribute uh, activation. So we got to do activations, I believe. So let's find that error. Let's see. Activations. Oh, go back. Here we go activations so activations right there uh, and let's hope there's no more error probably there's going to be more 
Uh, all right, so I've probably forgot to send it in right here. Are there any more errors? Let's see. I cannot find any more. So let's run it again. All right, outputs one is outputs ones. Yeah, we can do outputs. So I called it output like that. Now, please work. God damn it. No data provided for first number. Hmm. All right. So after a very long time, I think I found the error. Uh, so the error was no data provided for first number, need data for each key in first number and second number. All right. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, I have no idea why, but if I just remove this so that it says first num and second num, then if I rerun it, it actually starts training without an error. And uh, I have no idea actually why that is. Uh, if you know, then please do comment because I'm very surprised by that. Uh, probably one of the weirdest errors I've had. After five entire epochs, we have 96.3% on the training on both, pretty much both of the digits. And that's a little bit interesting to see that uh, when it rec starts to recognize uh, one of the digits, it also starts to recognize the other one. So they are uh, they improve pretty much on on equal level. Uh, and then, so if you would train this for longer, I would suspect that you would uh, improve this quite a bit. But then on the test set, anyways, we get about ninety percent. But then on the second value, we get eighty three. So I guess on on the test set, it might be more difficult to recognize the second number. But anyways, one thing I also wanted to check is that what if we remove and we just have a single loss function? Uh, it would be nice if this would then extend to to both of them. Uh, so let's try and see if that works. And that does seem to work. All right. So that's it for this video. I am taking a deeper look at the functional API with a more uh, real example. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.